Megan, can you video for me? Yes, I would love to. Awesome. <laughs> Do I look like a ratchet? Okay. All right, you ready, John? Yeah. Johnny's ready. John, John's exhausted today. John just had some crazy goals. <laughs> so with Ryan, I should have had it on video and shared it with you guys, but uh, I missed it. Anyway, all right, guys. Uh, teach me grappling. We're gonna show you guys um, a little bit of bomb flu choke today. All right. So um, Jason Bomb Flu, if you're out there, you're the man, dude. You have a choke named after you. I'm so proud of you. Anyway, Jason Von Flew and I had actually met, I think it was 1998 or 99. We only rolled together like maybe twice. Um, we used to train with the, the San Luis Obispo boys. Would come down and, and train with us down in Oxnard. But um, with Chuck Liddell and Scott Adams, old days in the 90s. And then Jason Von Flew, uh, 2005 or 2006, and my Memories getting foggy. Ended up choking the guy out. Uh, Ultimate Fighter, uh, like finale or something. And uh, I think a lot of people didn't even notice what happened. And as time went by, finally it got more popularity. But uh, other guys started to hit it. And now OSP's hitting it. And, um, you know, it's a killer choke. So it was always said by every great Jiu Jitsu coach let go of the guillotine when they pass the guard. Let go of the guillotine. You guys have to obey that rule most of the time. Um, I'll have future videos on how, when I keep the guillotine, but as a basic rule, follow it. All you young guys coming up, white belts, blue belts, follow the rule. Let go of the guillotine the second that guy passes the guard because if you don't, this is gonna happen to you, okay? So I end up hitting double leg, he goes guillotine, arm, arm out, guillotine, proper guillotine. He's gonna go, I cartwheel, end up in side control. Megan, make sure you can hear my voice. So we're here. He should let go of the guillotine, go ahead and let go, and get his frame, and then start hip escaping and getting his guard. That's what he should do. But too many people nope, will grab onto the guillotine and they won't let go. Now, if your arm is trapped, you can't go straight to the Von Flu choke. You've got to free this arm. Sometimes I have to just flatten this guy out, shove his legs, and drive my shoulder into his chest until he's had enough. Or until he's very weak and getting tired and I don't feel like my base is compromised, I can use my knee and pull my arm out if it's slippery enough and open enough. If it's tight, don't try it because you might get rolled. But once this arm is free, arm goes around the neck, okay? Really, really important, this arm we have to trap, okay? If, if I'm in side control and I drive shoulder pressure, it will choke him. But the problem is, when he has two hands free, this hand's gonna push against my hip, most likely. This hand, even if it's on the outside, he can use pressure, just literally, just kind of putting pressure and I can't finish the choke. It might be uncomfortable, but I won't be able to just drive my shoulder. When a guy has a guillotine, you can trap this arm and make it useless. Okay, so if he reaches around my neck, and I'm here, look at how my left arm, come on over here, baby, so you can see. You should be over here. My left hand is gonna trap it. So bring your arm like this, like you're doing a swim motion, and now I'm shrugging that shoulder, and my shoulder is pinching his wrist. So right now, John, go ahead and Try to pull it out, okay? So it's real hard for him to pull it out when I keep this tight. Now I wanna solidify what I'm doing with a lock. Okay, so I'm gonna lock my hands. Now once I lock, I pinch and I squeeze so he can't take it out. My right shoulder, even if he's tucking his chin, I wanna dip down into his chest with my right shoulder. See my shoulder? It hit him right in the chest, and then I'm gonna push into his neck. I get on my toes, and then I hit a back step. Like so. Now, again, he only has this arm to fight you off. And this arm will get tired. So when a guy is fresh, he should have enough energy to survive for a little while. If your shoulder's in the right spot, it's gonna be a short time. If it's not quite in the right spot, it might take a little bit longer. So you wanna get used to trying to get your shoulder in the right spot, depending on how you guys are built. 
if you're built really, really big, it, it gets real tough because your shoulder's so massive, it won't really fit into the carotid artery. It'll kind of sit on the guy's jaw. And then the von Flew maybe won't work for you as well, especially if you're fighting also a guy who's also very big and massive and it's hard to get in there. So we really, really want to have little skinny arms or skinny shoulders that are bony so we can get right into the neck. Now, um, it doesn't mean you should be a toothpick, but just keep in mind, if you guys are built like crazy big, the biggest dudes, sometimes you do it and all it does is crush a guy's face. So you wanna try to work on getting your shoulder down to the chest and then drive it into his neck. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys, uh, I'm gonna have to break this video up into a couple different, like probably two parts. So again, John goes into the guillotine, I'm gonna pass the guard. Okay, I'm gonna pass the guard. My right hand go, gathers up the neck, and then my left hand traps the wrist. I make a lock. Now, I'm gonna show you guys um, the, uh, one, uh, a movement that, that I saw OSP do that is real, real slick and important. Sometimes you'll get a strong guy, you'll lock it up, and you're trying to put pressure, but it's just not enough. He can hang on because his left hand will push your hip. So the left hand is enough and he's strong and you just don't have enough to choke him. So something right here, I'm gonna release my lock and grip the shoulder. This is gonna help me one arm hold on this and then when he's pushing my hip, I'm going to then use my right hand to just push his wrist down and staple it. Now I take away both arms, come back to the neck, then lock my hands, and then I can drive and complete the choke even easier. So you're gonna have that option as well. That's like that OSP option where you guys can staple the arm, pin it down. Remember, don't just like have a loose grip with your left hand when you go to fight the arm. If you fight the arm with a loose grip, he's gonna pull his arm out. So make sure that you solidify it, try to grip the shoulder, make it tight, and then pin it down. Okay, so again, so we wanna, we wanna set up, okay? You old man, you try to relax, loosen, oh man. Okay, I hit the double, he drops into a guillotine. I jump and cartwheel the guillotine. Once I land, look at what John did. He grabbed an arm in guillotine. I'm not going to von food choke right now. I'm just going to shell and drive my shoulder, open my elbow, and just apply pressure with my shoulder to kill his chest. Pull the arm out, then I'll go for it. Now, left palm up. Let's talk about the lock. Why do I do left palm up? You don't just lock your hands. If you guys lock with a left palm down, like this, okay, see the lock? It makes your lock get rolled. If John starts to put some pressure on his right shoulder, What happens is he's gonna roll the lock. So I'm gonna have you von flu me so I can talk about the details here. So John has side control, I have a guillotine. Now I release the guillotine to try to pull my arm out, but John gets it stuck. If John goes left palm down, let's show you the secret of the lock. It's very easy. He can hold as tight as he wants. I'm fighting him off on the hip. You see that? So he's trying to put the pressure. Go ahead and go into the choke. And now all I'm gonna do is bridge on his lock and screw his lock up. Okay, do you guys see that? This is your defense, your last resort defense for the Von Flew choke. Okay, last resort. You've gotta do this before you pass out or tap out. So when he makes the lock, he should go left palm up. If he goes left palm up, it's just a little bit easier. This can still happen to you but it's a little bit easier for him to keep his lock. His, the back of his left hand, if you notice, it'll slide on the mat. When I end up trying to pressure it, it'll slide a little bit better and he'll continue to choke me. And he'll choke me, okay? And that was without, he didn't even back step, okay? Now, if he switches his hands, I'm sorry, John, you're gonna have to feel this. Mm -hmm. So you see how his left hand goes palm down? I pressure my shoulder, and I start to just pressure it, and I roll his lock. 
If John is terrible, John will get rolled. Okay? Don't do that, John. Put your hand, I know you felt like I couldn't pull your hands out. You gotta, we're, we're, we're oh, I thought it was for demonstration purposes. I know. He's such a nice guy. Guys, when you guys demonstrate, I want you to know this about when I demonstrate. Okay? People criticize this all the time. They'll say, oh, yeah, it's easy because your guy's letting you do it. Guys, I don't have any of my students do that. When they do that, I let them know. I say, hey, stop making it look, I don't want it to look fake. Everything that I do here is not pre-scripted. I don't tell my guys what I'm gonna work on before we do these videos. That's why you frequently see my students making mistakes, doing it wrong. That's natural. I want them to make those mistakes. It actually helps you learn better, and I want it to be real, okay? Um, I've seen plenty of instructors that I respect. Um, Henry, Henry Akins is one of them. Uh, for example, I've noticed him when he was teaching. I learned this. I learned this from other people, but just to give a little shout out to Henry, I watched Henry go uh, guillotine choke me, and, and it wasn't me. It was one of his, somebody else, a friend of ours. And he goes, he goes guillotine, and he goes, no, choke me harder, choke me harder, really choke me, really, really, really choke me. And he almost does that on every demonstration. If you guys ever watch his stuff, and the, why does he do it? Because he wants it to be real, and that's important. We can't delude ourselves. Too much of the martial arts. It's like foo-foo funky because it just, or not funky, but fruity, because the guy grabs the wrist and then he goes like this and the guy falls down. And, and then it, that's what's ridiculous about the martial arts. I don't want any of that to be on my videos and I don't want any of you guys to think that these guys are taking it easy, okay? So really, you're not okay. gonna get rolled. Your hands will get rolled, your, your base, okay? okay? All right, um, so you guys gotta understand, this is gonna be a good, very important trick. So where do your hands go? John, go to, go to, I'll go guilt, uh, here, guilty. I go side control, okay? Look at my hands. Make sure you're not like this. It just rolls the lock a little bit different. When he puts pressure, it goes to the top hand and it screws my hands up. Palm up, now when he tries it, if you guys watch my hands, go ahead. You see that? No. I can go into it. So you want to make sure you have a good palm to palm. The arm around the neck, palm down. Or you could say the underhook arm is palm up. However you want to think about it, remember this lock. This is probably a detail you're not going to learn much in other places. Okay, you want to know which way to lock is the best way because that is a very good viable defense. And I can even break the lock sometimes, even when people lock properly. I don't ever want you to get Von Flude, but if you ever do, this is probably one of your last resorts, okay? I get up on top, I use my shoulder, I get up on top of their lock, and then I concentrate all my energy driving into their lock to, to either screw their lock up or to roll them, if they do hang on like a dumbass, okay? One last time. So you're gonna, you're gonna, I'm gonna take it to you. Yeah. So here we go, we'll go ahead. Double A, boom. He's here and I'm like, oh, oh, I can't get my hand out. Immediately, I'm putting pressure on his lock. Keep choking, back step. See that, I rolled the lock, now I can get my hand out. Now I can defend and hit the skate and get back to the guard, okay? All right, I think that's it. Yeah, that you happy, John? Yeah. All right, <laughs> check out the rash guard. Right? We're giving it away again every single video I'm mentioning this guys, please donate Go to patreon.com click the link down in the description box Please guys help me out help us out. We're giving you guys this awesome content every single day Okay, I've got to start keep hitting this I am getting a few of you guys to, to, to Donate and contribute to the channel through patreon, but I need so much more you guys, please right now We've got maybe about 30. We've got about 30 Patrons with like probably an average of dropping like two bucks, okay? So it helps, but it's not enough, guys. We need more of you. I know you guys are out there, and again, you'll spend money on Starbucks, you'll spend money on all these different things. All we're talking about is, you know, like five bucks a month, two bucks a month, three bucks a month. You know, if you wanna do more, if you can, I don't want you guys to like waste all your money on me, I'm not saying that, but if I add value to your life, again, if you'll spend a couple bucks each day on things that aren't helping you, Man, come on, if, if we're helping you at all, please, $5, $5 a month. It works out to pennies a day. You know, just help us out. It's gonna help 
help br uh, keep bringing the content to you, it's gonna make it a lot better, okay? Thank you guys so much, all right? Teach me grappling. Check you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>